In this world, there is balance with all things. One of those things is a trust between the world powers to not annihilate each other with nuclear weapons. But what if I told you, you have that power in Tavon by simply using this adorably annoying girl swinging a ghost around. Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. In today's video, I will be going over a ton of ways to increase your nuking potential with the brand new character, Hu Tao. Starting off, let's familiarize ourselves with Hu Tao's basic mechanics. In order to do a lot of damage with her burst, you first need to use her elemental skill and be below 50% HP. Then, you use her burst. This provides her with a massive attack boost from her elemental skill. The next thing you need to know is how her E activation works. Unlike Child, who applies Hydro when switching stances, Hu Tao's E creates a shockwave that doesn't damage the enemies and also doesn't apply Pyro. This is a huge quality of life benefit for Hu Tao nukes. The next thing to note about nuking is that you want to tap into two additional multipliers. Using the burst raw leads to some reasonable damage, but we can add two additional multipliers with Vaporize or Melt. Vaporize adds a 1.5 times multiplier, while Melt adds a 2 times multiplier. The second additional multiplier is from Elemental Mastery, which is actually its own multiplier. Now let's take a look at my Hu Tao. She has pretty good artifacts, I'd say above average, and her burst is at level 9. There isn't too much room to improve in terms of her artifacts and talent level. However, there is a ton of room to improve from the Lithic Spear, and I will demonstrate the Staff of Homa later in this video. But for the majority of this video, it will be focused on a Refinement 1 Lithic Spear. Now we need to take a look at all the options we have to improve Hu Tao's burst damage. Here's a list. I probably missed some stuff in my list, but let me narrow it down for you. To narrow it down, we need to discuss team limitations. You can only have four characters on a team. First, we need to make sure that the enemy has cryo or hydro applied to them for the melt or vaporize multipliers. This makes it necessary to use a hydro or a cryo character in the party. Let's focus on applying cryo to the enemies for that big juicy 2.0 melt multiplier. The next thing we need to consider is, of these cryo applicators, do any of their talents, passives, or constellations actually increase damage? In this list, only Ganyu and Diona have any passives or constellations that do that, but considering they're locked behind constellation 4 for Ganyu and constellation 6 for Diona, I'm not going to use them in this video. As such, we're actually low on options. Without any damage amplification from the current selection of cryo applicators, it doesn't really matter too much which one we use, so we'll just be using Chong Yun as our cryo applicator in this video. The next goal is to fill the other two slots with the most damage amplification as possible. Mona, Bennett, and Sucrose provide the most damage amplification in the game, each outperforming the others in specific scenarios. The next factor we need to consider is, do we need to counter a specific enemy mechanic to pull off our combo? Since our volunteer for now is Cryo Regisvine, we need to break his orb thing, and using Hu Tao to do it will put Hu Tao in cooldown, where you'll have to wait 6 seconds after her E ends to use her E again. While this is still doable, this is honestly pretty annoying to deal with. As such, Bennett fills multiple roles here. He can use E to break the Pyrovine's orby thing, he adds Pyro Resonance, he provides damage amplification with his burst, and he can provide the Noblesse Oblige buff. This leaves us with one more slot. Since we now have Hu Tao, Bennett, and a cryo applicator, Chong Yun, we can choose either Sucrose or Mona. Let's start with Mona first. And don't worry guys, I'll also be demonstrating Sucrose a little bit later in the video. So now that we have our team, let's add as many gear related buffs as we can. Looking at this list of gear related damage amplification, let's see what we can put on them. Mona can use the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer since she's a Catalyst user, and any of our supports can use a Noblesse Oblige, but I'm just going to slap it on Bennett because now we can put the Instructor's 4 piece on either Mona or Chong Yun. So let's just put the Instructor's 4 piece on Mona. Now because Bennett has the added problem of healing too much, and since Hu Tao needs to stay under 50% HP for a 33% pyro damage boost, we need to have a lower HP Noblesse Oblige set on Bennett. Also avoid using the flower since it adds HP. Finally, for Hu Tao, you should use some gear that maximizes her burst damage. Using an elemental mastery timepiece and a crit damage circlet will help a lot here. 
Normally, I usually have around 80% crit rate with Hu Tao, but for a burst showcase, I'm going to want lower crit rate, higher damage. But I personally still like having at least 40% crit rate for these nuke showcases, just to save some time and to not fish for crits all day. For preparing for the nuke, I like to have a portable teleport waypoint at the boss in question, right outside of its aggro range. Then, I simply use the boss to fill my burst gauges and teleport back to the portable waypoint. I also lower Hu Tao's HP to around 1 to 2,000 HP by using her elemental skill and by intentionally taking damage. Now finally, for the combo itself. I'll explain every step of it, but let's watch it really quick. Before doing the burst, make sure Hu Tao's HP is very low. This way, Bennett's burst won't heal her over 50% HP. First, hit Pyrovine's Orby thing with Bennett's skill. Wait for the skill to come off cooldown and use his skill and burst to break the Pyrovine's Orb thing. This provides Bennett's burst's attack buff as well as the Noblesse Oblige buff, and it applies Pyro onto Cryo Regisvine. Next, use Mona's Burst. Mona's Burst triggers Vaporize here, which adds the Instructor's 4-piece buff to your team. She also applies Omen, which adds 60% bonus damage. Next, switch to Hu Tao from Mona. This gives Hu Tao the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer's buff, which Mona has equipped. Then, switch to your Cryo character and apply Cryo to the enemy. I'm using Chong Yun for this, but you can actually use any Cryo character here. And finally, switch to Hu Tao, use her skill, and then her burst. So that's a pretty cool combo with Mona, but what if you don't have Mona and let's say you have Sucrose? Now let's take a look at a Sucrose setup. She will replace Mona and have the Viridescent 4-piece on her and the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. As usual with Sucrose, you want to have a lot of elemental mastery, so whatever artifacts you have that can fulfill the Viridescent 4-piece set with a lot of elemental mastery, be sure to use them on her. Also, because Sucrose is replacing Mona, who had the Instructor's 4-piece on her, we'll have to put the Instructor's 4-piece on Chonggyun now. Again, let's watch the combo real quick and then I'll explain it. For this combo, first you do the same thing with Bennett, which will apply Pyro, the Noblesse buff, and his Burst's attack buff. Then switch to Sucrose and use her skill only once. This gives Hu Tao Sucrose's passive 1 and passive 2, as well as applies Viridescent Veneer's 4-piece Elemental Resistance Shred. And importantly, because we only use her skill once, this will leave the Pyro debuff on the Cryo Regisvine. Now we switch to Hu Tao really quick to give her the Thrilling Tales buff from Sucrose. Afterwards, we switch to Chong Yun and use his burst. Because Pyro was still on the Regisvine, Chong Yun's burst will proc Melt, giving Hu Tao the Instructor's 4-piece buff. It's important to use Chong Yun's burst here because of the multiple hits it provides to overwrite Pyro and to replace it with Cryo. Finally, switch to Hu Tao and use her skill, then burst. Cross your fingers and hope it crits. Now just for fun, let's try this with my Staff of Homa and food to see how much she can do while still at Constellation Zero. Yikes. 732,561 damage with this setup. Hu Tao is a bonafide monster. 
Now this is with a refinement 5 staff of Homa because unfortunately I don't have a refinement 1 staff of Homa to try this with. With a refinement 1 staff of Homa you would do around 15% less damage. Speaking of weapons, both the Staff of Homa and Dragon's Bane do substantially more burst damage than my Lithic Spear, which was hitting for 400,000 earlier. So if you want weapon recommendations, I recommend the Staff of Homa and Dragon's Bane. But as you can see, even with the Lithic Spear, you can do hundreds of thousands of damage. But next, let's talk about practicality. I will be the first person to admit that for most things in the overworld, and just for most things in general, these full nuke combos aren't at all practical. Between the nukes not critting, messing up, and enemy mechanics, you may struggle to practically nuke things with a full combo. But that doesn't mean this knowledge is useless. For general use case, I recommend increasing your crit rate and only using a fraction of the full combo. For example, you can quickly apply Hydro or Cryo to an enemy and then nuke them with Hu Tao. Again, this isn't always practical, but it sure is a lot of fun. And ultimately, it's up to us as the players to find ways to apply this knowledge. So I hope this served as a nice introduction to how you can do big burst damage numbers with Hu Tao. Hu Tao is an extremely potent burst character. And honestly, this is only scratching the surface of what even a Constellation Zero Hu Tao can do with her burst. If you enjoyed this guide on nuclear warfare and Teyvat, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed, liked, and commented. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.